Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. In today's episode, we are looking at another classic kit. This time it is Ravel Monograms P51D Mustang in 148 scale. This is kit number 5241. In this model kit review, we're going to be attempting to answer the question, with all of the 148 scale P51D kits currently available, is this classic kit still worth building? We will be taking a look at the built-up kit. We will also be taking a look at the kit instructions, as well as the surface detailing that is presented on the kit. We'll take a look at the interior of the kit and the detail there, as well as the clear parts and the fit of those and the clarity of those. We will also take a look at the decals that are included in this sheet and how those performed. We will look at the color and marking guide that is included in this kit. We will look at the fit of the major components of the kit, and I'll give my conclusions at the end. I built this kit quite a few years back when I was first getting back into modeling, and as such, it was built with tube glue. There is no putty used on this kit. It was spray painted with a rattle can, but despite all that, I really had a fun time building it, and it still looks nice on the shelf. I'm really surprised at how well this kit has held up over time. Looking at the kit instructions, step one has you building the interior of the model. And a nice feature on these instructions is that they have actual pictures of the interior of the aircraft and some of the other aspects as well. We can see the instrument panel here. This is just detail painting on that instrument panel. We can also see the seat. It has some molded in seat belts. This kit was built completely out of the box. I just painted the seat belts that were there. Step two is a three-part step. In part A, you are mounting the cockpit assembly into the right half of the fuselage as well as the exhaust. In part B, you're just mounting the tail wheel into the left side of the fuselage as well as the exhaust there. And in part C, you're joining the fuselage halves together and mounting the hot air exhaust ramp. I know the instructions say don't glue this. I would simply glue it in place where you want it. The fit of the fuselage halves was pretty good. I didn't really have the very major seam to clean up there. Step three covers the wing assembly and modifications that you can make if you want to display the wing guns open. Parts B and C of step three just cover installing the fuel tanks if you want to do that. I didn't have any issues with the wing assemblies. Everything went together well and fit nicely. Step four covers the landing gear assembly. And it's a two-part step. It's got A and B for each side. If we look at the landing gear, it has decent wheel wells. The wheels themselves are nice. The detailing on the landing gear legs is also nice. The only note I would make is that the inner gear doors should be positioned closed if the flaps are up. The inner gear doors only hang down like that after the hydraulic system has depressurized. And once that has happened, the flaps also drop as well. Moving on to step five, it covers mounting the landing light and pitot tube to the plane. It also covers mounting the wing assembly, the lower engine cover, and the air scoop to the fuselage. Again, everything went well here, and I really didn't have any issues with this step. The second part of step five covers the installation of the tailplanes. These went on great. I had no fit issues here. Step six covers the prop assembly. This also went on well with no issues. The final step in assembly is step seven, and that covers mounting the cockpit canopy and clear parts and gun sight. Again, fit was really nice on these parts. I like the fact that this canopy can be posed either open or closed. It slides in place, and it fits nicely in both the open and closed positions. Moving on to the painting and marking guides, there's a page for the basic P-51 stencils. And then we move into the specific markings for either of two aircraft that are provided in this kit. You can model either Big Beautiful Doll or Miss Marilyn 2. The only drawback to the instructions is that they are not in color, which I would prefer. One thing to note on this kit is the surface detail is raised detail, and so the panel lines are actually thin raised lines on the wings, but the detailing is subdued. It's actually not bad at all. The only difficulty is where you have a raised panel line, 
that goes over a seam. You may have some continuity issues there. What I did for my panel lines to darken them was to go over them with a mechanical pencil. Just to give a little bit of highlight to the panel lines, I then went back and erased most of that. So it's subtle weathering. I didn't go overboard with this one. The P-51s at this stage of the war were actually kept pretty clean. I tried to do the weathering with that in mind. Shape-wise, this kit is actually pretty accurate. And to my eye, it still makes into a really nice looking P-51 Mustang. There are lots of other options available currently. One thing that this kit still has going for it is it's an incredibly low price. Probably the least expensive P-51 kit you can get in 148 scale. And as I said, it's a simple kit. It's not parts heavy. The clear parts are nice. The decals are nice. It's got a very extensive decal sheet. And this kit still looks nice on the shelf. If you want the definitive P-51 kit, I would recommend an Edward kit or a newer Tamiya kit. But if you're a newer modeler or a modeler just getting back into the hobby after a long hiatus, this kit presents an excellent value. It's a very nice kit to practice on, to hone your skills. And if you can turn one of these out well, you can turn out a Tamiya well. Well, I'd love to know what you guys think. If any of you have built the Ravel Monogram P-51D previously, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. As always, I hope you found this video entertaining and informative, and until next time, model on.